Hey everyone and welcome back to the workshop. Today I'm going to install that big flat belt pulley, the one that in some previous videos I bored out and cut a new keyway into. But first I've got to make the gib key that's going to lock it to the shaft and that is going to begin in the forge where we make the blank. The first step is to break down the stock into a more useful size. This piece is about three quarter inch round and actually an old hinge pin from an access platform. A good friend of mine gave me a box of them years ago and in the normalized state, the steel is tough enough to resist hammer blows, hard enough to resist wear and scoring, but soft enough to be just fileable and machinable. It's probably an EN8 grade or something similar. After checking the dimensions, I move to the anvil to forge a set down which isolates material for the head of the key. I'm forging this part for a couple of reasons. The first being that a forged part is always stronger, but also because my shop is much more geared towards forging and my old machines and tooling aren't going to stand up well to hogging off a lot of this tough steel. So I'm forging down to as close as dimension as I dare, checking often with calipers. The set down by the head is neatened and squared up with a set tool and the body of the key brought to the final size. The key is then cut off the parent bar and the head neatened on the anvil before being upset in the vise. This further defines the head of the key, squaring up the corners and forging a chamfer on the striking end. The finished forging is then straightened, cleaned and once again checked for dimension before being allowed to cool with air, ready for milling. But first we need to head to the job site to fit the pulley on the shaft and create the key seat. The pulley needs to sit in a very specific place on the shaft in between two beams in the ceiling. So I first mark out where the edges of the rim will be and use those marks to mark out where the hub will sit. I can then lay out where the key seat needs to be. The seat of course needs to be twice as long as the pulley hub is wide so the key can be driven in from one side on a level plane. I use the forging blank to mark out the seat roughly before removing the bulk of the material from the shaft with a grinder.
The seat is then flattened by filing and then measured to check parallelism with the shaft. I measure the seat every three quarter inch or so and note the measurement in thousandths above a round number on the mic. The actual depth of the seat is not critical as long as it's wider than the key itself. This is a flat saddle key so it only sits on a flat on the shaft as opposed to being in a keyway. These keys seem to have been quite common on shafting, I have plenty of old bits with such flats clearly hand filed or chiselled on. Where the high numbers are, are the high spots, so I continue to work those down with the file until the numbers are within a few thou of each other. Flatness is not as critical on the far end of the key seat where it will be outside the hub, so I pay less attention to that area just as long as it's close. With the key seat established, it's time to fit the pulley in position. This is where these wrought iron split pulleys really come into their own, lightweight and easy to install onto existing shafting. With the pulley in its final position, I can measure the keyway properly and get back to the workshop to mill the key blank to size. The key is machined on my 1910s Denby Universal Horizontal Mill with the vertical attachment fitted. I'm taking light cuts due to the tough material and starting by machining one side for my reference surface. After also machining the bottom surface, I can rotate the part to machine the other side, bringing the width to dimension. This needs to be a good sliding fit in the pulley keyway. With the width brought to size, it was time to machine the top surface, starting with the inside corner and the top of the head.
This tough steel was starting to take its toll on my slot drill, so I gave it a fresh edge on the grindstone. This works well as long as you have a nice true fine stone and pay close attention to the squareness and flatness of the cutting edges. Because slot drills only have two flutes, it's a bit like grinding a drill bit. I don't like doing this too often and do have a proper cutter grinder to set up one day, but today I was in a bit of a pinch and needed to get this give done. To ensure the top surface of the key is tapered, I'm placing a small piece of shim stock under the leading end. Now I'll mill down until the leading end is on size and that will leave a small amount of material tapering up to the head which we can file away until we get a good fit in the keyway. So I just want to cut in here and say I'm not happy with that finish at all, I was hoping for better, but the steel is very tough, um, not readily machinable. My flood coolant would probably help. My machine does have a coolant pump which is belt driven, but I haven't set up, it needs a separate camshaft and it's quite quite fat, so I've not set it up yet. And maybe this is, this is a good time to do it, um, so I should probably get on with that at some point soon. Fitting the key is a bit of a drawn out process involving bluing up the top surface of the key, tapping it in until it starts to bind, removing it, working down the high spots with a file, bluing again and repeating. With every cycle, the key seats further and further into the pulley hub until eventually it can be driven all the way through and has as much contact as possible, binding the pulley and the shaft together.
This process took me a good couple of hours with countless bluing cycles, but I got there in the end. The key bound up nicely in the last half an inch or so. There's a bit more work to be done to this system before it can be operational, but I hope you enjoyed this process and I will see you in the next video. That is successfully keyed.